a full-service insurance restoration company. For over 30 years, we've been helping families in Central Florida through times of need. We're proud to partner with TV27 to continue giving back. Florida Cat and TV27, your community connection. Okay, how old are you now? I'm 67 now. And how old were you uh, when you attended the school? Uh, in 57, I was 11. And how long were you there for? 17 months. And how come you were there? Uh, they got me for not going to school. Okay, so you were truant? Yes. All the yes. time, and so um, you went there, and how long after you, you were there did things start to develop and you realized that this wasn't any normal reform school? Shortly. I can't tell you exact days, but um, it started almost right away. It's simply because, you know, you have, uh, when you're in an institution where a bunch of boys is and everything, uh, you're new there, uh, people try different things with you, and, and, and so uh, whooping started right away. They start, they call them spankings. But what happened is uh, they would have what you call the shake. Uh, the shake was something like another boy trying to walk up on you, uh, you know, trying to brush up against you uh, with his penis. And that, when, you, when you're in a situation like that, you have to fight, you, you know, uh, they just didn't play that, you know. I wasn't that way, and, and you let that be known right away. So that was about the first encounter. And was that with someone who worked there, or that was another? Uh, child? No, that that was that was that was one of the uh, one of the students, you know, the inmates that. And was they there. were made to do that. No, no, they just. I mean, it's just. A, I guess I don't know. I, they just guys doing things. I guess oh, okay. you know. And so, were you you were abused uh, physically as well? Correct. Yes, I mean I, I had beatings there. If that's what you mean, right. I, I used to work at um, uh, on in, in in the field crew. And the field crew was consist of nothing but labor work. I mean, we grew all the vegetables, kill all the cows, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and we furnished both sides. When I was there, it was segregated, and uh, the guys we called the black side and, and the white side. On the black side, we did you know labor work, down and dirty. I mean, we plied the mule, we plant the corn, we pick the cane, we make the syrup, the sugar, etc. That was our job. Um, but when, if you felt like you didn't want to do that at any time, or if you felt like you want to run and not be there at any time, then that uh, produced you a whooping or a spanking, so they can't said it at that time. What was that like? Awful. I mean, uh, what they call the White House, once you go there, you was in another world. Um, uh, when I went there to the, to the White House, that's where if you didn't pray, if you didn't know how to pray, you learned pretty fast. You would call God, you would call Daddy, Mama, anybody. Once they laid you on that bunk, it's a little dirty bunk in a little isolated little place on the campus. And uh, in that little place, it had four or five rooms. They would take the boys in, in the room, uh, at that time boys in the room, and they would separate them from the rest of the guys. They would tell them, say, this is what you did, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have to hold this bed while we beat you. If you turn this bed loose while we beat you, we will hold you down and start all over again. Some of the guys got beat till they, they bled. Some of them they split open. Some of them that they, 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 they fainted. Some of them couldn't stand it. Some of them would try to run. They couldn't. They would beat them, knock them down, hold them, and they would beat them until they was they just got satisfied. And you? Myself, I went four or five times. I never turned loose to bed, but I wish I had. I, well, I don't wish I had, but in your mind, you know, it's like after about ten or twelve licks. You're dead. I mean, your, your bottom is dead. And at that time, you kind of wish, or uh, what I did was kind of like in a, in a experience in some, you know, like out of body experience. I mean, I just left the body and leave the pain, and, you know, uh, just anything. You know, you call mama, daddy, no one there was to help you, you know. Nothing but hold that bed and bear the pain. And uh, you were there for how long? Again? Seventeen months. Yeah. And you were sentenced to a period of time. Is that how it worked? I, you know what? I was eleven. I just turned eleven when I went there. Uh, they had me in the in the detention uh, home. They call it the juvenile detention home. Uh, eight or ten times. I don't know how many. But I don't remember a judge. I don't remember anybody sitting and say you got to be there at a certain time or whatever. What they would tell my mother, the truant officer would tell my mother, like you know, we're going to take these boys. And uh, I'm going to send them, we're going to put them in a place where, uh, you know, they can get an education, you know, so they can grow up to be fine men. They would be, you know, uh, a help to society, you know, they'll be fine men. And my mother, she was uh, illiterate, she, you know, she just believed what they tell her. And she said, okay. So uh, next thing I know, we was riding, my brother and I, was, it was three of us, you know. They sent all three of us at the same time in 1957. My oldest brother was there in 1952. So uh, really, we don't really know what you're actually going for. 
So how did you finally be able to leave? How did that happen? I left after about 17 months of beating and whatever happened. You have to make a certain rank. They beat you to that rank or, you know, when I was beat up to, I don't even remember the rank that I was at the time. But uh, after 17 months, uh, they let me go. What was the worst thing you saw? The worst thing I saw was somebody running away from there or trying to run away from there. And the abuse that, uh, that happened to them. Uh, some of the guys would return after they, they were caught. Uh, uh, and, and, and we always thought somebody would say they got away. Only to find out 54 years later, they didn't get away. Uh, they have so many graves there now that they're exhuming. Um, so I'm finding out one fellow, I can, can't remember his name now, but they did call me and tell me his name. He disappeared in 1958. And uh, when he disappeared in 1958, all the guys say he got away. 54 years later, they have a, a sign-in sheet where he went into the Florida School for Boys, but never returned out. So they called me and told me it's very possible that he was killed. Um, we do hear of certain you know, boys being killed. Um, some of them in the middle of the night. Some of them run down by the dog boys. Some of them through the Klu Klux Klans. Whatever the reason was, they never made it back. But they would always tell us that, you know, either their parent come and got them in the middle of the night or, you know, they had to send them back or whatever reason. We find out later that wasn't the cause at all. Do you still um, think about this often? I think about it, yes. I, I think about it it's simply because I, that was about the worst treatment that I had, in, you know, in my life. Um, it started about when I was about eight years old. They put me in a real jail uh, in a place called Crescent City, Florida. And they, uh, they took us into the principal office in Crescent City, Florida. And the sheriff, their name was, or police there, his name was White Cap. He literally beat the hell out of us in the office. That was the beginning of it, you know. And um, from there, straight on to a jail, from there to a tension home, from there to uh, the Florida School for Boys, from there, straight out of there, to prison. They sent me to prison when I was 14 years old. Same thing. They said I was breaking in the stuff or whatever. I never stole anything. I never broke anything. But that was the that was the faith of that. So yes, I, I do think about it. I mean, I look at the guys today. I look at the young guys today. You know, and what they're going through, not even realizing and knowing what they're facing. But once you're in the system, you're done. Once you're in the usually, you're done. But for myself, I call myself fortunate. Uh, after all of that, after all I went to prison and everything, you know, I still went to the military. And I, I wind up being, I, I would like to think for myself as a pretty successful. I mean, I own two or three businesses and so forth later. But during that time, I just had to prove to myself I don't need you. And I don't need your system, you know. Did you think you were going to get out of there alive? At times, at times it was doubtful. I mean, we worked in, in Mayrano, we worked as little boys. They had us uh, making syrup, cutting cane. I cut the top of my toe off in a cane field, trying to cut cane. At, at, you know, 11 years old, what did I know? But we had to do that. Um, and when we did that, they took me out of there and they put me in a processing plant. The processing plant is where we processed all of the meats. Uh, we killed the chicken, cows, whatever it was, to furnish for both sides, you know, the white and black side, uh, you know, for food. So, uh, yeah, it was times when I just didn't know what was going to happen. It was times I wish I was dead. It was times I wish mama would come, daddy would come. But every week, you had to go to school at least one day. Well, it was even day, odd day. You go to school a day, you work a day. I never made it past the third grade. But it's one thing they taught you. That's the, the trick your mom. And that was every week they made you write a letter home and say, Dear mom, I am fine. How are you? You know, we had a wonderful time this weekend. We went to the movie. Behind those kind of letters, they never had an idea that anything was going on. But if you didn't say that, you didn't write a letter, you got beat for that. You got beat for walking on the grass. You got beat for talking in the line. You got beat for wetting the bed. You got beat. I mean, you know, it was just it, this type of thing. We never, I never knew that it was white side and black side until later. It was, it was segregated at the time. And the only trades that we got was how to plant corn or cut cane or whatever. Uh, compared later, I understand, to the white side was a lot different. They got trades, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, it was times I wished I was could vanish, yeah. And uh, do you suffer any sort of post-traumatic stress to this day about it? I know some guys do. do I wake up sometimes, you know, and I can't believe it. Uh, 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 I would say to myself, I would call myself kind of successful simply because I managed to somehow sweep it under the rug. But every time it comes up, 
you know, then the flashbacks come, you know, so, so we try it, not to talk about it so much. Is it tough to be here, or is this a kind of a cathartic release for you guys to kind of be here and be around one another again? Well, I, I would say much more of a release is simply because you have a chance to talk about it to people who, who understand, who was there, who went through the same thing. Uh, when we was younger coming up, I mean, people would, I mean, you know, if you were young and you was black, what are you talking about? You got letters that say you was doing fine, et cetera, et cetera, you know. I remember when I got out of, um, uh, uh, um, prison, I think it was. After they sent me at 14, I went to join the military. And uh, here in Orlando, and they told me, you know, you don't got no education, we don't need you, you know, you have to go back, whatever. But you got a criminal record, we don't need you. Only find out about six or seven years later, they drafted me. You know, in 1969, they drafted me. Now you want me to go and stop some damn bullets. You know what I'm saying? But when I wanted to go, you didn't want me to go. So I went, I went, and uh, after being there uh, a few short months, it was too much memory of me around them, prison, get up, when to go to school, when to do this, or when to work, when to come. I, I said, no, this is not me. I can't live that life again, and I didn't. Anything else? Well, I mean, I, you know, I just wanted you to know, I just wanted to get it out that uh, for many young people today, you know, they don't realize that it's still uh, people living around, uh, walking around that's a part of history. You don't read this in the book, you know. Uh, we are here, and it's a number of us here now, you know, that can go around the world. We can broadcast this. We can let you know you don't throw your life away. You know what I'm saying? But the system is not, it's just a system, and you're caught up in that system. Once you're in that system, you know, that's all they need. Just that number because it's, it's you know, you're a commodity. You know, you're just a number to them. But they don't, they don't regard you as a human life. We would like for young people to know and institutions to know that we got eyes on you. We were there. We know what you do behind closed doors. And we want the world to know that you or any, any, anybody, should, any organization should thoroughly check those people because they abuse children, they abuse the boys, the girls, and we are here to make a stand. We are here to say, open them damn doors and let us see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Stop making the children, uh, uh, you know, confess the things that's not true. And that's what the system is all about. That's, uh, and we just want the world to know that we're here. And we will make a stand. That's it.